You can do either one. Both. You can have a conversation with me. I, I kind of turn in a little bit. Okay. Me either way. And then uh, we're up on that monitor over there. You can see yourself. You look fine. Mark's going to give us the thumbs up. We're ready. Is this recorded or is this live? Both. Both? We're still going live here at NADA 2020. Thanks to AutoAlert for hosting Modern Dealership Magazine as we do our in the box uh, interviews here live. I guess I said that. Yeah. Uh, we're getting towards the end of, and this doesn't really matter, only the live kind of stuff matters when we say what day it is and what time it is, Jason. Yeah. The, but when they're pre, when we send them out again recorded, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So if I'm like, it's been a long day, it's our last interview, nobody knows that, right? Yeah. But it is, it's been a long day. You've been walking around, you've been doing what? Ah, networking. Yeah, networking. Thing, yeah, yeah. We got clients that were taking. I'm finally meeting Preach in person. You yeah. Know, when I first started, I used to sell all the accounts, got to know them, but now we, we got accounts. How can you scale Lot Pop? Because you guys are like hands on. Yes. It's not automated, right? It is hands on. How's that scale out? Well, a little bit. Uh, we're, we just released in the software. All the data that we've been pulling for six years now, uh, we've been tracking and training, putting the software that the dealer can use on a daily basis. So I think it's going to help us scale a little bit more. We do an hour call every week with our stores. Yeah, see, that's. So, where the scalability yeah. is like yeah. that's each of my guys handle about 20 and gals i have uh 25 30 accounts but that makes it like a boutique you know night we know they're we become part of their team so when we're doing those hour calls and stuff that's that's the biggest asset every dealer told us we love the report and we love the data but it's the calls it's when you actually get on and get in our face and make us and you handle basically you handle everything for the dealer when it comes to the internet shopping process correct uh yes i mean we uh, we consult dealers on internet process management but uh, biggest and the new car inventory management but our biggest portion of the business is used car inventory management because right. there's more flexibility there so how it's how it's merchandised how it's priced and keep that inventory turning so speaking of used car or just speaking of internet altogether we'll use car yeah. why is and i just i just pulled it up again i saw you wrote uh an article um based off of my conversation with rick reichert either last year or the year before that when him and i were talking about internet pricing yeah. and some dealerships still not putting their price on the on the it, and and you wrote from that but then you referred to an article that you wrote in 2005 Correct. this is just being why uh, why is it i know that dealers are worried about leaving money on the table yep. but why is this such why is nobody it's, grasping that, that you have to put your now, prices and just to give a little contents that I, you know i started in 1997 i was doing internet sales in 98 i was doing articles in dealer magazine in 01 02 and all the stuff that i wrote about that when jim ziegler said that I the could, internet would not sell a car exactly <laughs> and now he's yeah, got the internet battle plan. Yes. And so. <laughs> Sorry to be yeah. took off there. I've actually I remember that day of too. my old, old ma magazines. Yeah. And, and the articles are still relevant today. I'm like, man, it's 15, Why is it 15 changed? plus years. And it's, I don't know, anyone can say it's job security almost, you know, but, you know, for us to help, help these dealers. Well, I understand that. And I know, I know that, uh, so my grandma would have a garage sale, right? Yeah. And my grandpa would not want to put prices on the stuff in the garage sale because he would want them to come up and say, hey, how much do you want for this old golf club? Sure. And then he could read them and be like, oh, I want $3 for that. And just to throw them on the, on the ceiling yeah. for three bucks, right? Yeah, yeah. Seeing what they would do instead of just automatically putting a dollar 25 on it right in the table putting five bucks and they pick it up put it down and walk out yeah you know you is, that, the, that, is that just the old school way of looking at it yeah you know I, i've had dealers as a matter of fact we had a client um, that we talked to he didn't have prices on and it was uh it's a it's a package that they sell the dealers so multiple dealers can have it in different areas but you know the, their thing is to hide the price to drive leads but what kind of quality leads are they right you know, they're they're not and obviously what do you hide right um but they're you know their pitches that are our pricing and what we do is so competitive we don't want our, our competitors to know about it is that the big thing like is the competitors are going to price theirs like yeah. in reality there's more of a subprime dealership that yeah high prices that you know it's just paranoia would just skip over yeah it's all about squeezing that last dollar mm -hmm. but yet there's so many other processes they could do at the dealership to make more money and sell more cars but yet that's top of mind yeah. right yeah exactly. that's crazy you um we talk about inventory and we talk about getting used you know pre-owned inventory that's out there you had wrote, I believe that pre-owned inventory was up 300%. There was more bought. How are we doing for 2019? Am I wrong? Yeah. But so, yeah, used cars. Pre-owned sales is way up still. Yeah. yeah. And what, that, that's a good thing. But yeah. Right. Well, yeah. What do you attribute to that? Well, all these lease returns and everything coming to the market, and then new cars just being so high. I mean, there's only so much incentive a new car company can do. You know, when you got zero percent and big old rebates. Right. Only, and then you're trying, as a new car manufacturer, trying to hold the values for residual values. For 
releasing potentials, you know, so you can't just throw a bunch of rebates on your car, so that's that fine line, and it's just, it's just a high dollar. Also, I think some of it is coming off the recession, you know, it was a while back, but people are still getting their feet they're still holding on to and they don't want to be in big in debt, and yeah. so they don't go head into another new car, and they're doing used and stuff, so. It's just, it's, 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 it's kind of interesting how that whole thing works. Yeah. Now, with Lot Pop, first of all, I've got to give you credit for having the coolest backdrop of all the videos that are being put out on the web in the automotive retail industry, you know, of, of teaching and education. But I'd like for you to walk me through, let's pretend like Todd Crosley from Gary Crosley Ford was sitting right over there, right? Yep. And, oh geez, right there. <laughs> How weird is that? Wow. Oh, wow, that was just yeah. coincidental. What do you do for a dealership like Gary Crosley Ford? Well, it's kind of when your inventory management tool isn't enough. You know, when you when every, everybody out there has some kind of inventory management tool, how to price their cars and yeah. everything. So V Auto is well known. You used to work for V Auto. Eight years. And so it's the data that's in there. I, I see it's a lot of it's just snapshots. And what we do is we capture that data and we see trends. And as you see trends, then we know where to where to fix issues. So we put, we got about 100 charts that we look at, we put 30 key metrics. And so I, I equate it to like, the Chiefs. They just right. won the Super Bowl, right? Exactly. So, you know, when you think about football, now they're going into next season mode. They're looking at who they're going to recruit and who they're going to, what, what changes are they going to make to go to the playoffs so they can get back to the Super Bowl. Right. So all the way up till game one, just like a dealer might say, hey, I want to sell 200 cars next year. Okay, well, how are you doing it? Well, I might buy more cars, get faster in turnaround time. Just like the Chiefs are going to make adjustments now, but when it comes to week one and they got the Raiders, they make adjustments to the Raiders. Maybe they got a strong secondary and a, and a, a, a strong uh, special team. So that's what you're doing. They win, they win. They win that week. Next week they adjust to the Chargers. They don't talk about playoffs anymore. And so yeah, we got dealers that have goals, but you can't just say I want to sell 200 extra cars. You got to know what, where do you got to make adjustments. Sometimes it's your average investments and your photos are behind. Sometimes it's your heavy in trucks don't have enough cars and your pricing's gone up. So with those metrics and those those benchmarks, we, we score that out and we get to say, hey, dealer, here's what you need to work on. And that's where Lot Pop came in. It's your, right. your Lot as a whole. you got an inventory management tool to price a car, <laughs> to take a piece in your inventory, look at the market. There's plenty of those. But no one's really looking at the Lot holistically and saying, okay, what adjustments do we need to make? Who are we playing this week? What adjustments? Win this week? And just keep moving the needle. Gotcha. Our stores will, I mean, we want them at least sell what they carry. You get 100 cars, we're going to sell 100. But a lot of our stores do 125. You know, we just talking to a dealer selling 60 with 40, and his grosses, everything's up. I don't want to put you in a difficult position, which yeah. I, I might with this question, okay. but you do not have to answer this question. In fact, you can just either say no, or because I've heard it from different dealers, and I know you used to work for Viato. Mm -hmm. I know that pre-owned pre -owned inventory and understanding the pre-owned um, side of sales is absolutely your just that's where you're at. Is V Auto killing gross on the pre-owned inventory? No. No, it's not. Here's what's causing gross. Because V Auto is just regurgitating data that's already out there. V Auto doesn't tell you where to price a car. You can just see easily that this guy's priced here. So you either compete with them or not. What I think is killing dealers gross, um, and this might put me on a limb, but I think it's the dealers without an aging policy. Because when you go look at a car that you're competing against, the top three or four guys in that, in that competitive set had it for 90 in 100 days and they're blowing it out. So now you either got to compete with them yeah. or you sit and wait for his to sell and your price becomes relevant. But in the meantime, as you sit and wait, your car depreciates. So by the time he blows his out, <coughs> you're right. at 60. So now you're blowing yours out and the next guy's doing the same thing. So if everybody had an aging policy and would have a 60, you know, 30 day supply of cars, uh, you wouldn't, everybody could buy and sell current market values. But now I got to compete against a guy who yeah. bought it 200 days ago and is blowing it out. Right. And so I think it's the dealers that don't have aging policies that they're killing themselves. Yeah, that the aged inventory on the lot and just it's like it, giving it back. Appreciate. And so a lot of times the dealers say, "Well, you, you know, our market's different, or you don't understand. We're a little bit different." I said, "What? You're, you're, it doesn't. Your shoppers might be different. You, it doesn't matter if you're mom and pops in Harlem to a, you know, Mercedes Benz store in Beverly Hills. It's a depreciating asset." at every location. Absolutely. You might have a different customer or clientele, subprime versus highline, whatever, but it's a depreciating asset. The sooner you get off it, the better, and the guys that hold out are killing everybody else. That's See, that makes opinion. That does make sense. Yeah. Right. And I, I, I asked you this question because you knew it, but also you had that relationship you had with Viato. I didn't know yeah, it was and now. Yeah, it's not Viato. You got yeah. this digital dealer, right. link. I mean, there's, yeah, it's, it's, and it's not a race to the bottom. That's one of the things I say. It's not a race to the bottom. If, 
It only is if you're worried about the guy next door. When you're peeking at them going, hey, he's priced there, so I'll go here. Right. If you just look at your inventory and what your problems are, address the cars that are having those problems. I think the know. person, I think the dealer that's doing what you just said about looking next door yeah. is also the ones that won't put his prices on the internet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they kind of have, there's a form or a formula here for, for seeing that. What do you see for 2020? Uh, some trends that, that are going on with with internet sales or with, with anything that you focus on with dealers? Uh, you know, I, from my understanding, wholesale is going to continue to increase. So yeah. the availability is still going to be high. Um, you know, the Carvanas and, and, and uh, the CarMaxes and all this, a lot of dealers are complaining they can't go to the auction and buy cars what they need to, but those, because of those people running them up, but they're not going anywhere. So <laughs> you're going to have to Is that go. a fear for dealers? The, the a lot of them running are, out of pre inventory, pre-owned inventory yeah. because of the auctions. Yeah, well, a, yeah, running, keep, keeping the because if new cars drop, then they're not getting as many trades, so they got to run in the lane, and then at the lane they got these people with their arms propped up against the wall and just bidding on everything, paying top dollar. But you know, you got to realize, and, and what dealers sometimes they're starting to realize is, you know, wholesale is a global market. But, you know, worst case, it's a national market, but it right. could be global. And, but yet your retail is local, regional at best. Right. So they think they can go to the Kansas City Lane and you're competing against a guy. That's how it used to be. Yeah. But now guys in New Jersey buying cars and shipping them out. From all over there. And that's the Carvanas. They can buy them over pay in Kansas because they know they can put it in Sell LA somewhere and else and at a higher. And so the guys are just going, what am I going to do? So I got to do this because Auto Alert does sponsor the Modern Dealership in the Box podcast. If you need more pre-owned inventory, check out Auto Alert's use card tab within the system where you can data mine your own customer base looking for vehicles yeah. that you know you can turn on the line. Exactly. <laughs> just say, there's other okay. ways they can get well, around and yeah, get into that. I'm just, just saying with Auto Alert, it's kind of fun because they sponsor us, but. Yeah, I think there, I told dealers, I think there's two avenues, CPO to help, because those are later models you can, because uh, you're going to get revenue off of uh, customers coming back for service, interest rates. And those type of customers that buy CPO eventually might upgrade to new. Right. So data mining those previous customers and then leasing new cars. Because in the long term, it's a, that's a long term goal. But if I can do 20 leases this month, three years from now, those cars are coming back. I should have the first shot. I do another 20. Another three years go by. I got 40 coming back to me now. And I'm doing another. So as a long term, if you can grow that leasing and again, get them back in the door, data mining going, hey, I know your lease ain't up for six right. months, but we can get you out now and put you in a new one. I know, I know global might be a little bit out of your, your reach, but I do know that the United States was a, was a big, um, they were turning a lot of pre-owned vehicles overseas to uh, nations in Africa, in the Middle East, that they're able to take excess of all these, you know, when we got to, and that must be slowing down now if today's dealer is fighting against Carvanas in the, that, that are trade outside. Yeah. I should have asked Howard Hakes that. He was here with AIDA earlier yeah. about how that trade. Um, but they, you would say the used car business is quite a fickle? Is it quite a, but it's exciting for you. Yeah, but it's been growing, you know, and that's been our challenge. I mean, it's sad to say, I think we actually grow more if dealers that had a bad used car season because they reach out for help. Yeah. But dealers are, are having record months and stuff. Is this putting a lot of the buy here, pay here, smaller lots out of business? It's making it tougher, for yeah. them, obviously. Um, but you know, when everybody's having good months, it's hard to look at their flaws and see that there's actually more potential there with more growth and more volume. Um, because of these record bunts, and it's it's a short memory. It's it's crazy yeah. how everybody forgot what happened in the recession and how they had to be very disciplined with those dollars. You know, when I started with Viato in 05, 06, it was right before the recession. In 08, hey, we kind of took off because dealers didn't have new right. cars. And they really focused on it and made sure, you know, when that cash flow was gone, they had to make it up and, and use. Yeah. And now it's getting sloppy again. I, I fear for that, but. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I need to ask you, um, where'd you watch the game? Cause you're a Kansas City oh, guy. Yeah. Were you at home? Good. Yeah. Yeah, I was home with the family. It was good though. Yeah. It was a good game. The family get into it? Oh yeah. 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 My wife and everything. Yeah. Did you guys get a chance to make it downtown for the parade? I didn't. I had employees, but I had yeah. to work, so my employees got to that was go down cool. There. Yeah. So, did you go? Uh, yeah, no, but yes, because I lived down there, or oh, I did. True. That's right. Moving, that's right. but you just went down there. Uh, yeah. yeah, crowds aren't my thing, and yeah, I just as being a Red Sox fan, I just got back from the uh, last year, went to the parade in Boston oh, did you? for the Royal or for the World Series, and uh, that kind of paraded me out for a while. Well, I heard I mean, a few years ago when the Royals won. I mean, I heard the highway was jammed up. You oh yeah. Get anywhere? I'm like, I'm not gonna mess with. Chiefs that, was different. Yeah. It seemed like it was a better flow this year. The weather kind of paid a part. So yeah. I almost wish I would have went because it was I think everybody bad. remembered the Royals parade, so they were like, yeah. yeah. But there was a lot more people there. There was just as many people, but most of them were downtown. Yeah. Jason Rice is with Lock uh, You need to get a hold of something. You don't have pricing on your website. Get it. That's the least of your worries. You got, yeah. you got pricing on your website, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. You believe in that? I do. I hate it, but I do it. <laughs> You're not leaving money on the table, Terry. No, sir, I'm not. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Closet. Thanks yeah. for letting. Those are your, your, your guys right yeah, there. That's good. Thanks yeah. a lot for joining us, right? Yeah, appreciate it. In the box here at Modern Dealership uh, at NADA 2020.